over to you yeah thank you for the introduction uh, i would like to go back and uh, a, a little bit about what you said so yeah i mean we are seeing trends in gui editors and uh, we have full blown ides now but uh, at the end of the by the end of the talk i hope that i will convince you that even if you have those knowing vim will make you more efficient and you will start wishing that you have uh, i mean you have the same kind of uh, interaction with your ide and most ides actually support vim plugins Uh, so yeah, I mean, it might seem like oh, we sh we should use Vim and only uh, limit uh, environments where we have a lack of a screen or something. But in fact, this is uh, much more powerful. In some cases, more powerful than your uh, IDE when it comes to purely editing text. Okay, uh, before uh, before I start on the actual uh, content, I would like to mention that. Uh, we recently lost the creator of him uh, bram mulenar i uh, think it's a few months back august 3 and uh, yeah uh, i'd like to also pay respects on that regard and uh, if if uh, any of you is interested this is a charity where meaning all proceeds go towards uh, uganda education foundation you can learn more about it inside um, i mean in the in the editor itself you, you go in you open the editor and you call uh, you do colon help iccf you get some links where you can uh, make a donation uh, yeah so uh, vim the ubiquitous text editor uh, you might have, you must have heard about it if you have used a linux box uh, and yes it stands by uh, i mean it is actually ubiquitous you will find vim installed by default on most linux distributions almost all of them and uh, uh what what is its philosophy uh i would like to start by uh talking about what is modal editing uh modal means it has <laughs> modes so when you first open up the editor it's not in the same mode as your typical editor would be in like what would you expect in your normal editor you type a key and then you expect that key to show up right uh, but that's not going to happen in vim none of the keys you type is going to show up when you open vim like uh, let me switch on the right uh, yeah i hope you are able to see my keystrokes at the bottom right Uh, so you can see i'm typing j but nothing's happening and typing k nothing's happening uh so this is called the normal mode ironically this is a normal to people who are used to gui editors but uh, in vim it's normal mode why is this chosen because if you think of it most of the time you spend is in editing rather than actually typing stuff in so vim is optimized to make that workflow fast so uh it starts in that mode which is also called the command mode where basically you give commands to the editor uh to to describe what what kind of changes you want to make in uh i mean broadly we have three modes first is the normal mode and then if you want to start typing you press i which is a mnemonic for insert now you can see at the bottom left that it is in the insert mode now i can start typing right and then to come back to the normal mode you press escape uh and then there's one more mode uh, primarily which is called the visual mode and if you press v you can again see at the bottom left that i am in the visual mode visual mode is like you are using your mouse to select text around i can uh, move around and it selects selects the text so if i have a few more lines uh then even in visual mode we'll see we'll see uh, kinds of visual modes but just to show i can see that if i am in this v mode you can see it selecting by character i can i can i can be in visual line which selects by line and then there is interesting block mode which i go into by pressing control v 
where you can I can select blocks of text. Um, yeah, so how many of you have used Vim? Can I uh, can I get a show of hands? OK. Uh, how many of you still use Vim in your day to day? OK. No, nobody uses Vim. OK, I see one person. OK. Uh, yeah, so. Kailas, uh, how would you describe him as? Would you would you say that uh, Vim has a lot of shortcuts? Uh, yeah, so my usage on it is typically to check uh, config files on servers and uh, like make any small changes. I'm not like I don't know about Vim a lot. Okay. I do know about the modes on Vim and uh, because that's the only like editor that we have available. That's what I use. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah, uh, Arvind, do you have an opinion on that? I've, I've heard a lot of people say that Vim has a lot of shortcuts and it's too complicated to learn, and that's why they go for uh, something like Nano. Uh, I have learned and used only a bunch of shortcuts. I know there are many more, but I have not mm -hmm. been a avid user. OK, for example, okay. Uh, copy and paste. Mm -hmm. There must be a shortcut for that, like yes. Yang to a buffer or something like that, but I yeah. never really learned it properly. OK, OK. Mostly yeah, so, up and insert, delete uh, character, delete line. These are the and uh, go to a search, go to a particular line number. Those are the things I use. OK, yeah, Difficult, so uh, I, I would like to address that notion. Like it's not really shortcuts that uh, I mean uh, when when I first started in uh, started with Vim again, it was the same condition as Kailas like it was the only available editor for us because we we had to SSH into a server. Uh, no, no UI, so that's the only editor we had. Probably we could have used Nano, but anyway, uh, at the time like uh, they they say, I mean people say that it has a lot of shortcuts, but I would say that it's uh, actually uh, wrong to say that they are shortcuts because they are not, not sh shortcuts in the sense that uh, they exist in other editors like C control Z for undo. What what sense does it make? Control Z is it has to be just burned in your head to remember that. But Vim is not like that. It is extremely uh, different from uh, from those kinds of editors. It doesn't have shortcuts. It has a language. It has a language uh, that you can use to uh, describe the changes you want to make. So uh, so it makes it very nice. Because now if I learn that language, it's just like talking to a person. Like if I have that in my head, I can just uh, not thinking too much about it. I don't have to reach uh, reach uh, my part of brain, which uh, maps some random key key combination to a task, right? I, if I learn the language, I am I can pretty much compose the commands and other things together, um, uh, you know, to achieve the change I want to make. Like describe the way I want to edit my text on screen. Uh, so I have, uh, I mean, throughout this presentation, I have some uh, brackets here, which uh, you know, part part of exercises to showcase how I would do it. So here I have write the modes. So as we discussed, we uh, have three primary modes in in Vim. So I, I want to write them down. Uh, so before doing that. Yeah, so as I said, the language of the editor, it it helps you describe the kinds of changes you want to make. So the grammar of this language is very simple. It is it has nouns and verbs. Uh, nouns are like, uh, for example, word W. When I press W, you can see it moved by a word. I press W. It moved by a word, right? The, those are all uh, nouns. Like this, we have many of nouns. So now, if I want to go to the beginning of a word, I press B, right? B, B. Uh, when I enter a noun, uh, 
they the cursor makes some motion, right? And then we have verbs, verbs like delete, yank, meaning copy, change, indent, and there might be a couple others that I, I might not remember at the moment. But uh, basically, you have a, you have these motions or nouns and uh, verbs or commands you can say uh, which operate on nouns right so example i said w for word it you can see the cursor moved from uh, moved to the next word and then again b which moved back to the beginning of the previous word so i can compose these so delete word right delete word and i have a uh, I mean, I, uh, there is an associated letter for uh, uh, doing that delete operation, which is D, surprisingly. So D for delete, you can see at the bottom right that is waiting for uh, my input. It hasn't done anything. So the syntax is a verb uh, uh, and followed by a noun. So whatever motion that I give, right, it actually performs that verb on that motion. Now it's waiting for uh, waiting on me to enter the motion. So now you saw W actually move to the next word. Now I'm in, in the process of uh, writing that DW deletes the word. Right. Uh, and then U for undo. And then control R for redo. Uh, but this is a syntax and then you can. Uh, that's basically it. You just now it's just a matter of uh, learning all the verbs you have, learning all the nouns you have, and uh, uh, find, and then when when there is a situation of uh, manipulating text, figure out which kind of motion you want to perform and what operation you want you want to perform. Uh, yeah, like that's going to be an explosion of number of uh, shortcuts. If you uh, you shouldn't call them, but uh, the the number of uh, possibilities, right? So. You multiply the number of motions you have, number of verbs you have, and the and other things like it's a it's going to be huge, like two thousand of them, uh, if you if you consider all of the combinations. But the thing is, you don't have to memorize it. It's a language. It will come by nature once you uh, get used to that language. It's going. It it may take a week, uh, or so, but uh, yeah. After that, it's just a matter of learning those. Uh, you know, I, it's just a matter of practice. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me just switch to. Okay. So yeah, now I have the task of writing the modes, right? Uh, what what do I want to do? So if you remember, I want to if I want to insert text, I I have to go into the insert mode, and uh, for that. One way is to press I. But uh, I missed a part of the grammar, which is that you have a verb and a noun, but you can actually prepend it with a count. Right? Uh, actually, you can prepend a motion with a count. So for example, uh, we saw W moving by word, B for moving back a word, and there are also J for moving down and K for moving up. L for moving right, H for moving left. Uh, so what I mean is you can prepend these motions uh, with count. So let's say I want to go 10 lines down. So to go down, I press J, but I can do 10 J to move 10 lines down. Uh, so let me, yeah, here I, I had this uh, DW for deleting a word, right? But if I want to delete two words, I can do D. And then two W, D two word, D delete two words, right? Uh, that that deletes two words. So you can uh, you can yank a word, uh, like, uh, but this uh, now there's not much extra thing to learn. Now here you are just learning how to yank stuff. So if I want to yank a word, I press Y and then W. It has yanked a word, meaning I have copied it. Now if I want to paste it, I can paste it anywhere. I can. Uh, for pasting it, uh, no surprises here. P for paste, right? I yanked a word and I pasted that word. I can do the same thing. I can do Y three W means I yanked three words. Now I can just P 
to put those three words, right? Uh, yeah, using this knowledge, I want to write the modes now. Now, uh, let's say I want to, uh, yeah, I, I have want to have a bunch of space, a bunch of spaces, and then modes there. So, what I can do is I can, I can prepend this with account. Let's say I want like 20 spaces. I can do 20 and I, and then I can space, and then I can press escape. Now, you, now if you see, it has actually entered 20 spaces. Now here, let me write the modes. Mm, uh, one normal. Okay. And uh, there's one more observation you can make, which is that all these commands, right? Uh, so these uh, commands, as you saw, wait for the motion. If you repeat the command, it's going to apply on the line, right? If uh, now Y is waiting for a motion, now I can do Y W to copy and then paste. But if I do Y and then Y, it is going to operate on the line, meaning it's going to copy the line. Now, if I want to put the line, no surprises, P to put the line, right? And then I want to put that again, uh, U for undo. And uh, I want to put it twice because I have two more modes, so I can do 2P. It's not much of a difference, but uh, you can see like uh, it will be, uh, it can be useful. And uh, yeah, now, Okay, now I want to make these one, two, three. Uh, first thing is, we'll go to visual mode, visual block mode, because this time I want to select this column, right? So I press Control V. I'm in visual block and J J to come down. I can do R, R for replace, and then zero. It will replace everything that is selected with a zero, right? And uh, if I want to reselect what I had selected, I press G V. It has reselected. And now here's a cool trick. Uh, you can press G and control A. Uh, sorry, control control A. So, excuse me. So G control A. What did it do? It actually so uh, there's a there's a binding in Vim for control A. It actually recognizes that you have a number under your cursor or on the line. If I press Control A, right, it actually increments that number. Uh, so I can undo all of this. Uh, again, I can if I want to add like 10 to it, I can just do 10 and Control A. It will add 10 to it. It's it's nothing new. It's just the same grammar working. Like you have uh, you have something and you can pre prepend it with the count, right? And then uh, yeah, when I do when I select it with Control V, it's going to. If I press Control A, it's going to increment it, increment all of them uh, uh, by one. But uh, when I do it with G Control A, it's going to have that state inside itself. So it gives me like an increment like that. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Now, now what I want to do, I I want to change that normal to uh, visual. So uh so i come down with j w to switch and now i want to change a word can anybody guess what uh, key press I, I can do for changing a word for deleting a word it's dw and for changing a word it's going to be cw c w the difference is you can see at the bottom, it automatically put me into an insert mode because I want to change it, right? Now this one is going to be visual. And uh, okay, I think I did not talk about the third mode, which is uh, X mode, X mode, uh, let's write it. So again, CW to change a word and X mode. And what is this X mode? So it's a uh, it's a very famous meme that uh, people cannot exit Vim. Uh, so the way you exit Vim is you do colon Q, and 
if you have if you want to if you don't if you want to discard the changes you uh, you append it with an exclamation mark and if you want to write the changes you do wq right and what where uh, like the mode i'm in when i press colon is called the x mode and it's another way of sending commands to your uh, editor uh, we'll see more about these when uh, i mean as we go uh, as we progress in the presentation uh, if anybody has any questions or uh, is curious about some other uh, uh, some other operation that they want to make just uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and talk about it i'm 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 all about keeping this session interactive so uh, yeah so nouns verbs and text objects okay text objects so that is interesting uh, what are text objects so as you can see now i have to implement this i have i have, I have to quit without with uh, discarding the changes and let me open main.c okay uh, let's say i want to change this uh, i i want to change this message to something else maybe uh, hello attendees or something right uh, okay w welcome welcome attendees how how would you do it in in a uh, typical editor you would reach out to your mouse select the stuff delete it right i mean while selection it might happen that you probably will go one extra character and then re retype it that kind of stuff but with vim right what i can do is uh, i can just do c for change and i can say i for inside and then i want to change inside double quotes right i can do change inside double quotes like the literal double quote character and now you can see it has deleted everything and put me into insert mode like now i'm ready to change it to whatever i want so i can do welcome welcome attendees exclamation mark and escape to come back right uh this this does not only works with double quotes i can do let's say i want to delete everything uh, that printf i mean all the arguments given to printf i can do d for delete and i for inside and uh, uh, open bracket right uh, it deletes everything so b i i can also do b b is like uh, an alias for bracket now let's say i want to delete everything inside the main function itself now if you see like uh, this function is surrounded by curly brackets i can do di curly bracket everything goes and curly bracket also has a uh, also has an alias which is capital b i can do di capital b right you can see now the advantage of this grammar uh, it keeps allowing me to very uh, i mean it's very easy to remember that right you have d you have c and then you have uh, surroundings like the bracket flower bracket double quotes you can also do it with uh, uh, angle bracket so i can do uh, c i angle bracket and then maybe std lib dot h right uh, i can do all sorts of stuff like that uh those are i mean you have a ton of other text objects and uh, you can you can read them in colon h text objects text objects i think yeah like uh, vim has uh, one of the best documentations in any, uh, i mean it's one of the softwares with the best documentation like uh, whatever i'm saying right now is is already in there it's just that it's a little um, intimidating to go through such a huge documentation and learn all of these but yeah uh, if you like you can do colon h and uh, i i said w right uh, you can see what w does it will tell you what w does it words forward and you can see there uh, it is like prepending the count which is an optional stuff and all of that okay um anything let me see what i have next we've got text objects okay so yeah i have one more task here which is to underline this uh before that i want to uh, i want to delete 
everything with the I mean around the brackets. I want to delete around brackets and uh, I can just do delete around and B, which is an alias for round brackets, which is going to delete around brackets, right? Uh, OK, now uh, how would I underline this? I would actually copy this line. With YY and then put it below. And now I would go into visual mode. And select. You can see like E is another motion, which is uh, for end of the word. OK, now I can do. R for replacing every character with a hyphen. OK, I, I did underline this. Uh, what else? Yeah, so now there is a. As I showed you, so I can do delete delete inside. Double quotes and if I want to do the same thing again, I can just say dot you know, it's going to delete inside double quotes and here I press dot. Nothing's going to happen because it's not surrounded by. Double quotes, but here if I press dot, you can see it, it is repeated. So basically Wim is going to remember your most recent change and it's going to apply them uh, to to the line you're on. That's the period operator. OK. Yeah, so supposed to be macros. That's also a challenge. Now, uh, how did I actually write this? Right? How, how did I make this? Uh, that we're going to see that part of uh, that part of the that part of Wim now. Uh, there's a tool called Figlet which is a collection of fonts and you give it a text and it outputs an ASCII art of it. Uh, so what now my intention is. Uh, I want to delete this and put macros here, write macros here, right? So what, uh, this is basically a paragraph. If you uh, uh, I mean a paragraph is basically a block of text which is surrounded by new lines. So now we have a a uh, text object for that as well, which is called paragraph. Uh, paragraph. <laughs> Obviously, that is the. So if I want to do this, right? If I want to do D, if I want to delete that paragraph, I can do D I, and then P for delete inside paragraph, and you can see that paragraph went away, right? Uh, so either that, or I can also uh, visually select all of the lines with. I mean, now you can see I, I want to operate on lines. I'm in Shift V mode, which is line delete. OK, now I'm here. Uh, so. There's this. Uh, figlet hello, right? There's this tool. And I can give it a font figlet minus F Roman and then. Uh, uh, hi, right? It has a bunch of fonts. Basically what I want to do is I want to copy this and then put it in there. I mean, that's one way of doing it, but uh, Vim allows you to I mean you can do it basically without even exiting them. So uh, here's an X mode command. It's R R for read. You can also type it completely and then I can uh, I can say exclamation point figlet minus F uh, basic it's just the name of the font uh, and what are macros, right? So what is this doing? When I uh, th this syntax is saying that execute the command figlet minus of basic macros and uh, read that into the buffer. So you can see it came in here, right? Uh, now a little more changes, which is uh, yeah. Now we have uh, some use case for the visual block mode. I basically want to indent all of these lines, so I, I go to visual block mode, come down, uh, shift I. To insert there and then maybe three tabs and escape. You can see it, you know, it, it indented all of those lines, right? So, yeah, what are macros? You saw, you saw that dot is uh, powerful in the sense that the, uh, I mean, it, it makes you repeat stuff. But sometimes that repeating stuff can be, uh, it can be a little more complex, right? For example. Uh, say I, I have a. I have an array. I'll call it. Nums. Uh, 
equals I have uh, no uh, yeah, let's go sorry let's say I have a bunch of names and I, I have to deliberately make these mistakes. Just a second. OK, so let's say this is the state. I mean, I probably pasted these things from a file or something happened like this is the state now. Now to correct the syntax, what I need to do. Let me just grab a few more names. Uh, yeah, right. So uh, to you have this kind of a thing and now you want to surround these with uh, uh, double quotes and also have a comma at the end, right? Uh, so with macros, you can just think about one specific task and then you can play it on. I mean, and then you record those keystrokes and you play it on uh, however many lines you want, right? So now let me just think of this one. So if I do uh, how do I surround this with double quotes? We already saw how we change, uh, how we could change the word. Uh, yeah, but so here's how I would do it. I would first do a CW, which is for changing the word. I would, ah, excuse me, CW. I would uh, have double quotes, and then so the thing to note. Uh, with Vim is that whenever some text disappears, it is going to be uh, in a register which you can use to paste. So when I did CW, Arvind went into a register. Now I can do capital P to paste behind. Uh, there will there are some differences. Like P will paste it forward and capital P will paste it backward. Right, and uh, yeah, and. Now I want to insert at the end of the line. Insert no, no matter where I am to insert at the end of the line. I can do capital A for append and then a comma. Right. So basically I need to repeat this stuff on all of these lines. Uh, let's start from the beginning. So to start recording. I can to start recording. I. I can I have to press Q. It's waiting for one key now. It is waiting for a uh, register. So you have as many registers as there are almost as there are keys on your keyboard. I'll record it into D. So you can see it's recording at D, meaning whatever key keys I press will be part of that D register that I can replay on another line or maybe. I mean on another location. So first thing is I have to change the word double quotes and then put it behind. And then go to the end and comma and escape. Now I am done right to to say that you are done recording. You press Q again. If you look at REG, you can see that. Uh, which did I press D? Yeah. Uh, do you see this? D register has all of the keystrokes, right? And these are escape characters and other other things, right? So now, now the trick is, uh, you can see now I'm going to use one more motion, which is plus. Plus means it's going to put uh, you on the next non-blank character on the next line. I mean, first non-blank character on the next line. Okay. Now, if I want to play the same keys, I do at, and hmm, which was the register D, right? There you go. So I can now I can I can do a dot. Uh, sorry, dot wouldn't work here because I have to play the macro. So instead of at D, I can do at at, which is saying that play the last macro at at. Right. Uh, so you might be thinking now, oh, what if there are like uh, like I'll just simulate. So what if there are a lot of these lines and uh, you can't keep pressing that right like this solution like now I, I have to reverse all of this so let me show uh, while telling you that I'll I'll end up showing you some other tricks so 
uh, what I want to do here is first visually select by column and go right. So here I want to delete all of these. And OK, now uh, you can see how I had to scroll. Instead of that, we can make use of the text objects we saw earlier, uh, which is like inside, like all of these are inside uh, the flower bracket, right? I can do V for visual, I for inside, and then capital B for uh, flower bracket, right? So now it has visually selected. If I had done D I capital B, it would have deleted all of these. Now I want to visually select. So it's again like they are use reusable. Uh, they are like Lego blocks that can be reused with different uh, different commands and verbs, right? So now uh, I can do colon. When I like, when I go into the sex mode and visual mode, you can see there are some weird characters, which means that. Uh, which is actually a range. Uh, so this range is saying that all of the lines visually selected. What do you want to do on them? So here I'll say norm, which means normal mode. And what I want to do here is there's a motion called dollar, which will put me to the end of the line. And uh, there's some there's a command X which deletes the character. So if you can you can imagine that this these commands are going to be executed on each line. So which all lines? The range is whichever lines are selected. What I'm saying is go to the end of the line and XX meaning delete two characters. Right now if I press enter, you can see it deleted all of the characters. OK. Uh, yeah, so just to uh, uh, show you like dollar, if you see dollar, it's going to take you to the end of the line. So no matter where you are, dollar. And then uh, this comes from regular expression. Dollar is end of the line. And then there is caret, which is beginning of the line, right? It's the uh, same idea. So if you do ca caret, it will be beginning of the line, right? So now uh, coming back to the uh, coming back to writing the macro. Now I'll write the macro as if I'm starting here. So what I do is I go to the uh, word and then I Change the word, do a similar uh, uh, maneuver, add a comma, and then I. Oh, I forgot to record. Sorry. Uh, I'll record it in Q. I'll record it in Q. So I go to the word, change word. Oh, uh, here's an interesting thing. In instead of that, uh, so I already have this D, right? I already have uh, the D register ha uh, which has those commands. So what I can do is I can do Q, Q. I'm recording at Q. What I do is go W. And then now I do at D, which was the earlier earlier macro. And then I uh, stop recording. OK, so now. Uh, what I can do is I have recorded those. Uh, I, I can I can play all those. Uh, I can play that. Uh, play those keystrokes on each of the lines. So I'll undo this, and now I'll do the selection V I capital B, and here I go norm, and here norm like to play the register. I do at Q, meaning on each line that uh, uh, those those set of characters are going to be repeated and. There you go, right? Now you can see everything is double quoted with a comma, right? Uh, yeah, uh, basically you can uh, create a macro of your choice, and and uh, uh, you you can pretty much do anything and get it repeatable. Like, uh, that's extremely powerful. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about the accuracy. So. Imagine you, somebody is sharing a screen, sharing their screen, and you want to uh, take control of their screen and probably your pair programming. So you you want to uh, get access to to their machine so that you can type stuff there. And if it's a GUI editor, uh, you will have to use your mouse, and there will be significant lag 
no matter how fast your internet is it's just a, a physical barrier right uh, so if you are using the mouse to select stuff around or move around your text file it's going to be painful but with vim i really don't need to look at where my cursor is i can just describe right i don't need to i don't need to say that i have to select this line uh, and miss probably a line or two uh, two characters like if i want to say i want to delete all of the contents of this function i can just do delete inside and bracket right this is this is the fastest you can be right? i i i, I uh, like I don't need to reach for the mouse at all. Right? Uh, I mean, it's daunting in the beginning. Like uh, it will feel like. I mean, if you if you want to start learning Vim, like, you have to first get rid of your mouse. You have to amputate it out of your workflow. Like, uh, you shouldn't even use arrow keys. Uh, your uh, so basically your uh, workflow will be completely keyboard centric and. Uh, I don't know. It's like we moved backward when we brought in the when we brought in mouse to our workflow. It's actually slowing us down. If if all uh, we are doing is editing text files, then keyboard is the most efficient. It's objectively uh, objectively more efficient than the mouse. Maybe if we come up with a, a newer technique of writing uh, programs, more interactive stuff, maybe mouse can be faster then. But uh, the most of the stuff we do today, like most of programming is writing text, right? Is manipulating text. So yeah, uh, I don't think I don't think if uh, uh, any other workflow than this, if it is involving you to switch between your mouse and keyboard, it's always going to be uh, objectively slow. Uh, well, uh, it will take time. It will take time. Obviously, if you're uh, used to using the mouse, you can still be fast, but uh, it's not efficient. Uh, you'll, you'll be you'll, you'll start out very slow when starting with them like uh, uh, you will feel that miss of I mean you'll start missing the mouse but eventually once you get into this uh, you you can't uh, go back to using the mouse you'll start feeling that annoyance that yeah uh, oh, I, I would rather be just using the keyboard uh yeah this is a small to do add the speaker okay let's add the speaker so okay what i want to do is uh, yeah i want to add the speaker so what i'll copy this i'm also an attendee so i will copy i'll copy this and then paste it uh and here i do i can do ci double quotes chain inside and uh, i'll say kill and then uh i'll yeah I'll, I'll i'll do the same thing i'll i'll have it here now i want to lower case let's say there are again some other things i'm pressing tilde which which is just swapping the case um, and now uh, if i want to lower case all of the stuff inside the double quotes it's gu g small u and I double quote. A GU is again, GU is a command and it will take a motion. So if I do G, uh, G U and inside uh, flower bracket, right? It will, you know, lowercase everything uh, that is covered by that motion. But anyway, so yeah, now uh, I'll go to the end of the line with a dollar, come back with H and go into insert mode at meetup.com and come back to normal mode. Uh, yeah, that. OK, we have that to do. Talked about accuracy. Oh, searching. So how do you search stuff? Uh, you probably are used to using control F and control H for search and search and replace, but uh, here you do forward slash, which is searching, and then let's say search for uh, Nikhil, right? E enter, it will search for it. Now, if you want to go to the next one, you press N for next, and if you want to go to the previous one, uh, you have capital N, the previous one. And then I can search 
Arvind, do the same thing, right? N for next and capital N for previous. Um, so these, this searching, right? This searching is, it's again a motion. So what you can do, let's say I want to, uh, I, I want to start from here and I want to start from here and I want to delete till printf, right? So I can do D, now start searching, printf. It applies the deletion on that portion of text. Uh, so, yeah, okay. There's one more kind of searching which, okay. When I'm looking at logs, uh, there'll be multiple folders. And I probably want to search for a specific text. Maybe it's like a, uh, like some uh, a unique identifier and that will have appeared in multiple different folders and I want to do that, right? And what I would do is I want, I would go to the uh, X mode and I say Vim. Uh, it's actually short for Vim grep. So it's Vim and now uh, in this one, I can say to do, right? And then I can say star star and star. This, this means search in everything. But I probably want to just search for uh, in I mean, search for to do in .c files. If I do this, it it will actually give me um, it'll give me a chain uh, quick fix list. So I can show you this. You can see here it has found it in two places. Like it right now, I don't have that data. But if you do this in a uh, folder and like it will recursively populate this chain list with all of them, right? So uh, you can just I can just press enter on this one and I go to the next one. I can uh, also do CN for next one. There is no more, but I can do CP for CP for the previous one. And uh, yeah, and this this is going to be really helpful when you're you know when you want when you don't know where certain thing is and you want to uh, grab all the matches and inspect each one of them, right? And again, this this itself is a buffer. You can search here, wherever uh, you can search in this searches. You can narrow the search still, uh, still more. Uh, yeah, that's about searching. OK, so I have contrived a bunch of logs here. Uh, like when I'm looking at this, Okay, so I already see, see I've just copy pasted this and then I've edited some text. You can see 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, like some weird numbers are printed here. So first thing is I want to get rid of these. Now there is a uh, G command, G X command. So it goes like this, colon G, and then it takes a pattern. So pattern is, it's, uh, I want to select all those lines where uh, they, those weird numbers are printed, right? So pattern is, the the line begins with a space and then it has a digit right so now this is the pattern g and then the pattern and then the command so if i do d now it it's going to delete all the lines which were like that right undo if i if I, um uh now let's say i want to delete uh, only the only the lines that start with a space and then a zero you can go to the command history, which is Q colon, Q colon, and then uh, I'll now it says it has put this into a buffer. Now I have all the features of Vim, like Vim's buffers, right? Now, if I want to change this pattern, instead of this, I want to just say zero. I can do that, and then I uh, enter will execute that command. Uh, yeah. So now let's say I want to look at only debug logs. Uh, so I, it's the reverse thing I want to do. So I want to match debug, but I want to delete all the other lines, right? If I do this, then it's going to delete the debug line, but I wanted that line. So uh, let's say I have one more debug line. Uh, it's uh, now, now you can see the text object magic again, CA capital B, uh, testing or something yeah so now I, I have 
two debug lines. So if if I execute the same command g debug d, it's going to delete all the lines. But I wanted to do the reverse. So for that, instead of a g, I do a v. Mean with it, what it does is uh, uh, it negates the match, meaning it will delete all the lines which don't have a debug. Right now I'm left with these. And typically in my uh, in uh, in scenarios I deal with, uh, there's probably a JSON response printed out. Now uh, printing it pretty is going to like consume a lot of space in the log file and it's going to look weird. So instead they log it on one line. Now, how do I how do I uh, format this without leaving Vim? I can do that. So first thing is I want to copy this text. Uh, I mean, I want to copy this JSON blob. So copying is Y and then A and then capital B for yanking around the brackets and then there is a concept of tabs in them, so I can do tab new. It's like opening a new tab. Mm, I'll call it response.json. Uh, so now you can see the tab has like you can see a tab at the top. Now for P, I mean for pasting it, I would do a P. Now it's still not formatted, so I can utilize the uh, I mean interaction with the shell. So I know that there's a, I mean, Python comes with a module which is for pretty printing JSON. So what I'll do is uh, I will supply uh, this this line. So okay, there's a, uh, uh, so percent means the whole file, and then exclamation means uh, piping. And what I'll do is Python minus m JSON dot tool. What is this is doing? This is saying that uh, send the entire buffer to this command and whatever that command outputs, just write it back. You can see it got pretty printed, right? So uh, maybe Python has some uh, settings here. I don't know if indent indent equals to works or something. Yeah, it does work, right? So it's basically the command. It's the command and uh, it's going to pipe the entire text into it right and uh, you know format it uh, like it will it will format it uh yeah i think i think that should be enough uh yeah uh, what are the problems with them uh they are not really problems uh but once you get used to the uh you know this kind of workflow you wish that vim is there everywhere in every place where you are manipulating text like uh, a web form or some other environment where you are uh, uh, where there is a text box and you're editing and there's no whim right it, it's uh, it's going to be problematic uh, yeah i think um that's that should be enough for I mean, I, I know I, I did a lot of stuff without explaining, but uh, my my whole uh, intention about bringing this up, I mean, about this uh, of this talk was to show the power uh, rather than teaching what Vim really is, right? Uh, okay, so before and before concluding the talk, I want to show another thing. So I did so many changes to this. Now I want this file to go back uh, like the way it was, right? I, I can do colon earlier uh, and maybe one hour. It will restore the buffer back to the state uh, of uh, state it was one hour ago, right? You can see like this is what we started with and now we're back, right? And then you can also do go forward. You can do later and then five minutes. Uh, Okay, it basically timestamps every change you do, and you can move back and forth. And you can also do, <laughs> uh, I, I like to joke this around, right? Like you can do 365 days, days literally, later 365 days, and Vim will probably write code for you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's about it for my presentation. Yeah. Uh, Again, like I already showed you, like colon help is your holy grail if you want to know anything about, uh, I mean, any operation, any motion, or any command, right? You can do colon help followed by that thing, and it will bring up the documentation. 
uh, yeah, this is me. I'm, I can be found on YouTube, uh, GitHub, Twitter, and at, at this, uh, at the teacher in most of the places. Uh, so if anybody has, I mean, I'm, I'm now you can ask me questions. That was nice session. Uh, I have one question. Are there any plugins that comes with Vim? Let's say I want to know the line numbers or I want oh. to know which folder I am in or what are the other files in the folder? OK, <laughs> uh, definitely. I mean, it's not a plugin. It's actually so again, those are all commands. So I can do colon set number. And this is shortcut for SCNU. But basically you have this command set number will set the number. Right, uh, it will show the line number, but the thing is, it's not. Uh, it, it's ephemeral. Like if you quit this buffer, it will go away. So what you do is, um, okay. Now one more thing, you can start editing from uh, editing a different file from within Vim. You can do E and then go to the home file. There is this VimRC file, which. Yep. Uh, uh, so yeah, I will probably write this one down. I will open this, and yeah, here you can say. Uh, here you can store your settings basically. And I mean, you can have ridiculous amounts of configuration here. I've seen people like having thousand lines of configuration. Uh, I mean, the, it builds over time. But uh, again, I, I didn't touch on so many other concepts, and one hour doesn't do justice at all. Understood. Uh, yeah, but yes. So, yeah, and then there is actually, I, I prefer relative numbers. Uh, if I source this file, you can see. Like the number of uh, the the value of the number will never go will never go beyond 100 unless you have extremely small font, which is impractical. So the advantage okay. with that is uh, with that is I can do like let's say I want to go six lines down, right? You can see six down. I can do six J and I am here, right? I can do whatever I want. I want to delete the line. Uh, I want to copy line, paste line, right? And then I want to go like nine lines above. I can do nine k. Like you can imagine the problem with absolute line numbers. If you have like uh, maybe like uh, two thousand lines um, of right. Uh, if if you have no, uh, if you have like this. Now if you want to go to line nine, nineteen ninety seven, you'd have to do nineteen ninety seven dot capital G. Like that's going to be painful. Like if you set relative line number, right? It's it's never going to go above uh, like two, digit, two digits, but yeah, that's a side note. Yep. Interesting. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Anybody else has any questions? Uh, very interesting talk. Uh, an eye opener to the power of Vim. Yeah, thank you. There must be some cheat sheet on the online. Yeah, there is on a one cheat page. There will be. A, we'll get all the. Mm -hmm. What there, I found there. most interesting was to look at it from a as a language. Yeah. So nouns, verbs. So with that kind of understanding, it becomes easier to. You know, work with him. Yeah, I mean, you uh, you you don't have to think as much. Right? It's. I know typing is never a bottleneck, but it's very nice when you have some thought and you want to transform that into text, right? It's it's going to be extremely efficient, right? You might not be as fast with typing when somebody with a mouse can probably write that faster, but it's all about the efficiency, the number of keys you press. You, you can call it micro optimization, uh, but uh, in the long run, if you know these if you know, if you know, if you have the idea of Wim, if you have the philosophy of Wim burnt in you, right? You, I, I would say, I, I would, I don't think I would be wrong to say that you will be saving like months or maybe, yeah, weeks, months of editing time. Yeah, showing the log was right? very useful because typically log files are huge. And yeah. uh, any text editor will start uh, gripping when you open a huge log file. So exactly. Normally, VI is the editor I use for analyzing mm -hmm. logs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so uh, there it becomes very useful. Yeah, it's it's my day to day. And uh, uh, sorry, Chaitanya had a question. 
uh yeah nikhil so you didn't have to source the vim rc file right uh, i did so actually i was very fast at it so if if i oh, okay, okay. so if I, there's a source command and if i do source it will source it but you yeah. can source it from any other file like i didn't have to uh, give a so if i probably now uh no set color scheme maybe something very you know very stark now i'm in a different file now mm -hmm. i can still source that file i can just give it a command vim uh, vimrc right? you can see like it you can source okay. from anywhere else. Okay. Uh, uh, okay sorry for blinding uh, i probably should Color scheme default. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, what I was saying, I, uh, I, for me also, like I keep SSHing into new VMs, new machines. Uh, there won't be any other thing, uh, any other thing than Vim. So if you are uh, in that environment for the first time. You will use it as out, out of lack of uh, out of the scarcity of uh, GUI, right? But uh, before I actually uh, got into this environment, I knew the power of Vim. Now actually, I I feel like I want Vim everywhere rather than a GUI. And uh, yeah, talking of log files, that's also uh, a very common thing, like uh, searching through stuff and all of that. It's I've I've opened like gigabytes of file and it's uh, it's extremely fast. Uh, so I I did not uh, so there's one more motion like if you have uh, let me uh, GT. right so GG for beginning of the line capital G for the last line. It's efficient enough to actually, even if the even if your uh, file has like millions of lines, capital G would take a little over a second. So uh, of course it would depend on the capacity of the machine, but it's still extremely fast. Uh, Any other questions, to, guys? Uh, yeah, like, why did you choose like Vim over Emacs? I mean, that is always a debate, but uh, mm -hmm. so was, why would was, I choose? Yeah, Vim over Emacs. So there is a stark difference. Like it, Emacs is known for extensibility, and VI and Vim are known for composability. So Emacs has bindings, like uh, you do control, uh, they, they call them key chords, so control E, control A, uh, all of those kinds of things. But uh, there's, it, there's no idea of composable, uh, there's no idea of having this language in the editor, right? <laughs> Where you can describe the manipulation of text. Emacs doesn't have that. So they can't be compared. It's like comparing apples and oranges. Like they are, they are text editors, but their philosophy is extremely uh, are are extremely different. So e e Emacs has a layer, has a very nice emulation layer. They call it uh, EVIL, evil mode. Uh, so Emacs VI layer. Uh, if I want to ever go into Emacs, I would still want those want these Vim key bindings. So. But for now, I, I I didn't have the need for uh, having like Emacs is like an operating system. You boot your system and you get into Emacs. You read your emails there. You browse inside. You can you can browse and some crazy people have actually made a video editor in Emacs. Uh, but yeah, it's it's known for its extensibility. You can you can live inside Emacs. But Vim is uh, Vim is uh, a lot more focused. It follows the Unix philosophy. It does one thing well, uh, which is text editing, text manipulation. So, it, it, in my use cases, like I never, I never felt the need for, uh, uh, you know, Emacs, and 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 uh, all of these IDEs also. Sometimes you do need IDEs. Like they they do a lot of uh, uh, they stuff other than uh, other than the editing text, right? So 
I, I make sure that I have a VI layer, VI emulation, emulation layer installed on top of it so that my text manipulation is fast. Okay. And uh, uh, did you by any chance compare the, the new Vim with this one, Vim? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I just for this talk, I used Vim because I wanted to be uh, bare bones, right? I use NeoVim. Mm -hmm. I use NeoVim as my development environment. Okay. Uh, and with, uh, I mean, it has a lot of cool stuff. Yes, so that's my daily driver. Okay. Yeah, I just installed the Vim extension in my VS Code. So let's mm -hmm. see how it goes. Oh, that that's surprisingly nice. I think that's uh, second to what Emacs offers. It, it so I can already tell you what it can't do. So with this log file, right? I could do g debug d and all of this. It can't do it. So if you try running norm command on VS Code, it will say that <laughs> PRs are welcome. This is not implemented. So oh, there you know, are some limitations then there. Yeah, it's after all, it's just an emulation layer. It's not actually talking to your Vim uh, engine. Okay, okay. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, what happens usually is if I do that kind of attack, I, I open a terminal inside VS Code and I run Vim inside that and then do, okay. the, do the text manipulation. There are, there are, uh, I think there's one plug plugin which actually uh, runs a Vim, uh, uh, Vim daemon and just communicates like you, you get full capability of Vim through uh, basically is passing text around and then manipulating and putting it back in VS Code. There, there are some plugins like that. Okay. 